everyone, and welcome. My name is Adam Wilson, and welcome to Here and Now, a live music celebration featuring all kinds of musical groups and acts and talent from right here in Whistler. The next upcoming weeks, we're going to be showcasing all these great musical groups and bringing them to you. Today, we start off with one of the great bands here in Whistler, personal friends of mine, and very excited to bring them here. This is the Combat Dolphins. Thanks, Adam. This is a little number called Bird on a Wire, and uh, Trav's going to kick us off. Got me fit, got me fitting out. I was wondering how I seen your green now. Used to be a cop on the roof, got me fit, you got me fitting out. Well, I was wondering how I seen your green now. Once was as bright. Oh, now you fit so fast, that bit doesn't make it right. This is a song called Comeback. It's, uh, it's a beauty. Travi, let's, let's do it. Come back, please don't walk away. How you turn back, baby, I love you another day. Come back. Graceland, you left here with my heart. It's locked into your rhythm from the start. It's been a lot of candle and I'm raging to the dark. I'm telling you now, baby, you're my spark. Yeah. 
Great job, guys. The Combat Dolphins. What a phenomenal show they just put on for us here. And now we get a chance to sit down with them and get to learn who these guys are and what they're about. I'm sitting here with Murray, Travis, Julian, and Marcus, the Combat Dolphins. How are you guys? Yeah, really good, Adam. Yeah, we're good. we're yeah, super man. glad that Arts Whistler picked, you know, the most rock and roll guy in town to interview us, I think. <laughs> they get the energy. I think you guys were the most rock and roll today. Great show, guys. Great show. I love the songs. Uh, all original music you're playing there. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, we we definitely play a, a lot of a lot of covers in our in our bar sets, and I think with um, the bars being closed and COVID happening, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to kind of refocus our energies uh, on creating our own music, which is you know a, a rare thing for us. We're we're always kind of chasing the next cover tune to play uh, at Merlin's or, or the Swedish or something. So Well, let's talk about that. You guys were up until the pandemic, which has hit every musician uh, around the world, really. Um, what were you guys up to leading up to the pandemic? Great question. Actually, just before uh, the pandemic shut down, uh, Vale Resorts, we were playing at Merlin's. We had a gig that night, and one of the, uh, the top managers there came up uh, and said, hey, just to let you guys know, uh, it's looking like that this might affect us more than we thought. This could be the last gig we'll have in a while, so have fun. And this was at Merlin's, and so we looked at each other and went, okay, let's, let's have a good time, and we played the set. And I think we threw in, it's the end of your world as you know it. That was that <laughs> we got a good reception from that, and we uh, finished our gig out, packed it up, and the very next day, Vale Resorts shut their doors. Well, that happened, but uh, it kind of forced musicians to do things in a different way. And one of the first things that I noticed was, especially with you guys, the Combat Dolphins, you guys started doing these uh, online streaming shows. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take that one again, actually. I, uh, w when, it, when it looked like we're all going to go indoors and start doing this, uh, you know, I guess ourselves, that's something I kind of looked into myself. I, was, I saw a few shows. Um, online and I thought that's a brilliant way of doing it and you know Facebook was excellent and YouTube and the, all the social media channels that are out there so I basically dug into the internet and learned how to do it downloaded some software uh, set up my garage we have a party at my house every year so we've got all these white sheets and some lighting uh, that we set up for this big party we have every year and so I just redeployed that got some webcams and had a shot at it and we did it uh, quite a few times you could jump in here Myron. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting, kind of uh, being an outsider. Uh, every time I went over to Trav's house, uh, and if you think back to kind of March, April, uh, we were encouraged to be very restrictive with who we were hanging out with and what we were doing. So Trav was really the only human being outside of my household that I saw uh, ever. And uh, every time I'd go over to Trav's house, there'd be a new piece of gear, a new learning, and and I think you know we did our first stream was a bit choppy and and then our second stream uh, we used a new software platform and then the hardware started coming and the lights and uh, by the end I think we were actually putting on a not a arts whistler level production but it was uh, it was pretty solid I, I watched them and they were great um, one of the things I noticed it, probably because you were in your, in your own kind of territory in your own house you guys do some covers like a lot of musical groups around Whistler they do covers but you guys tend to do a little bit different kind of things with your covers. Can you explain that? Yeah, I can feel that one. So um, we, uh, you know, a as we've been talking about, we, you know, our, our sets are cover sets. Like we're playing cover sets. It's what the folks in the bars want to hear and we have a good time. Um, and we also like to flex our creative muscle a bit. So um, changing up the groove uh, of the songs and experimenting with things a bit uh, keeps it interesting for us and keeps it engaging for our audience. But the, the one sacred cow is I never change the, uh, the melody uh, or the cadence of, of the vocal line. So people love singing and dancing along with us. So that's keep it, keep it sacred. I love it. I love the version you guys do of, of all the songs you guys do. Um, tell us about the name, the Combat Dolphins. Where did that come from? What is a Combat Dolphin? <laughs> So yeah. when we started the band, uh, you, uh, we're going to go back in geopolitical time here. When we started the band about six or seven years ago, uh, this was when Crimea was um, usurped by Russia. So if you remember, the Russians went and invaded 
part of uh, part of Ukraine, which was Crimea, and that's where the na the naval base for the Ukraine was. And Ukraine had militarized dolphins. So these dolphins, a lot of navies have them in the world. They treat they uh, teach them to find mines and that sort of thing. So there are all these news stories about you know the Ukraine wanting their combat dolphins back. And I was just like, this is uh, this is this is a keeper here. <laughs> the combat dolphins. Um, so the pandemic hits, you guys are getting together, you're doing some live streaming shows, and from what I've heard, you've also been doing some songwriting. Yeah, right. I mean, it was a great opportunity to um, work work some of these songs that have been collecting dust on the shelf for a while, and um, hopefully this is the first flourish of uh, the start of our creative process that'll end in some some recording um if uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed the tracks we're playing tonight so that was my next question there's a there's a plan to record it uh we have a bit of work to do still right fellas yeah absolutely yeah we got it yes <laughs> we got four in the can adam we're on our way yeah, yeah. Uh, they sound great to me already <laughs> i have about 20 years of riffs so we just need to uh format them into song and, and how does the process of songwriting happen do you guys do you, are you a principal songwriter and you get together and bring the idea or do you guys write together as a group yeah i mean i'm bringing in the the riffs and the melodies but i, I would say the the songs that you heard us play today um are are quite influenced by the band uh, like heavily like you would you might not even recognize them so um just great to get the feedback from from marcus and julian and trav on on how we're going to shape things and uh, honestly after i kind of bring in the initial rollout of the song i'm in the back seat and and the boys here are telling me when we're going to make cuts and changes and and it's been it was pretty fun yeah well the doppelgaggle riff has been around for a while and we've kind of played with that we had it to a point and then it kind of got shelved a bit with playing lots of gigs around Whistler and uh, and then yeah it's great to have it back off the shelf and work with these guys and, and really kick it into into shape and, and make it into a full song. I really enjoy that song too. So. While you guys were playing uh, not many people might know this um, but Murray uh, the guitars that you're playing you want to tell us about those guitars? Yeah for sure so I've been building my own guitars for seven or eight years maybe longer and um, so yeah, the Long two the two electrics that I've been playing. Uh, we have a good story there. The two electrics I, I played tonight uh, were built in my garage, and um, and yeah, I I try and play my own instruments exclusively when we're gigging these days. Uh, I do have a bit of a story. So I started. I actually begged Trav to let me build him a guitar. This is um, five years ago. Acoustic dreadnought. I just dropped it that I needed a good big chunky dreadnought and. Yep. And I can tell you why I know it's five years ago, because my son is five years old. So I was building guitars pretty prolifically, and then um, two things happened. Uh, I had my second child was born, and family burdens went up considerably uh, on my time. And then um, we started getting a lot of gigs as the Combat Dolphins. So Trav's guitar and all guitar building activity really got shelved uh, and... Trav was really patient, and I got to tell you, he would always like just drop these gentle, subtle, like, I was hey, offering, uh, yeah, do you want hey, a hand? Do you want me to like? Can, is there anything I can do? And I'm like, can you build guitars? <laughs> then no. So um, I think I, I cut the fretboard in. I <laughs> think yeah, that yeah was it. he did. He put the rosette in as well. So, yeah. anyways, the 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 pandemic uh, was. Yeah, a lot of people are looking at the pandemic as you know, this is the worst year ever, 2020. Everybody loves to dwell on that. Uh, for me, it's it's been a it's been a great year in a number of ways. Like I, I had time um, to spend with my family like I've never had before. I've had time to get back into building guitars. We had time to start working out our own music again. So there's been a lot of gifts of time here that um, I definitely don't take for granted. And I think when all's said and done, I'm gonna look back on this year uh, with some fond memories. That's a great positive attitude. And I think as musicians, uh, because we are not working, we have to have that positive attitude and find a way to use that time productively. Um, that was going to lead me into my next question. If 2020 was a song, what would it be called? <laughs> the Waiting. Nice. The Waiting. Nice. Tom Petty, The Waiting. Jules, you got one? I can't top that. I can't top that at all. I got, I got one. You can't always get what you want, <laughs> but if you try sometimes, you get what you need. <laughs> that's a good one. I was going to say it's the end of the world as we know it, but I feel fine. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's get a little more personal. 
And we are going to get to that wheel that's right beside Marcus, which is giving us the mystery question. The wheel of misfortune. But I do like this question. Which bandmate has the most annoying habit? You want to take this one, Murray? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I might stay Put out of this one. <laughs> Come on, Charles. Could be me. What would habit. your habit you be? Hassling everyone relentlessly, disagreeing as much as humanly possible. <laughs> but I came into this band, there had to be some checks and balances. It was all weighted this way. It's true. I just had to tug it back a little bit. You know? Yeah, it's true. He's done a good job. He was a disruptive force. Yeah. The, uh, I okay. would say the, the number one most annoying habit, which we've now resolved, was we would have people begging us for encores. Literally <laughs> screaming for encores. And Julian would <laughs> walk off stage in protest. <laughs> and then we'd start our encore, encore. And then he'd come back on. And, and I don't think like we ever really resolved, like, I don't get why you don't want to do the encores until uh, Julian came back from Australia and he was like, it's because you already we've already played our best material, right? So this guy, he's a perfectionist. Oh, and quality he, control. He wants to end on the best possible note. So I think now we, we've learned that we just need to keep a few extras in the can uh, and anticipate the encores better. Just he remember the last song. <laughs> 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 so we got some stuff coming up. You guys are planning on recording. Uh, and eventually, I guess you will release that and we will be able to hear these songs in recorded form. Uh, you got some combat dolphin fans around Whistler, I know. You guys have some type of merchandise available, T-shirts, hats, anything like that? We should have worn some shirts. Yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. We actually still have some shirts. We've got a bunch of printed shirts, which we'll, uh, we'll put on our Facebook uh, social media. We have stickers. We have stickers. Trucker I had some caps. hats, but the hats, they were I popular. People took all the hats. I actually have a few beauty stories, Adam, about, about the merch. So um, the first one is our friend Andrew Alito, who will be manning the kit here at the Here and Now Festival. No fewer than three times, I think maybe four times, he'll be drumming. He has a habit of texting us from the Reuse It Center <laughs> <laughs> a photo of him with a Combat Dolphins shirt that he's found at the, at the Reuse It Center. So he, he did it not once but twice. And I was just like, I was like, how much? And he said, five bucks. And I was like, well, that's below our cost, so please bring them back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then uh, the other time that was just too funny was I was, you know, regular old me walking uh, the village stroll, and a guy walked past me. It was like the summer, and he had the T-shirt and the hat on. And I, I went up to him, and I'm like, bro, nice shirt, great hat. And he looked at me like I had three heads. He was like, who is this crazy guy stopping me in the middle of the stroll that I don't know? And, and uh, he didn't even give me a chance to explain, like, the Combat Dolphins. I'm from the Combat Dolphins. You are wearing our shirt and our hat. So. And he didn't buy that shirt and hat from you guys, he did he? Probably got out of the Reuse Center based on what we've been hearing. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, the, the Reuse Center is our, like our local thrift shop of, of yeah. used goods that we can buy here in Also, where you can get all your band merchandise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we had a guy that uh, got a shirt for one of our shows, and he would text us on uh, Instagram. Uh, he's me in Sicily, he's me in Rome, and he yeah. went all the way around Europe and did this tour um, with just him standing at all these different monuments with the Combat Dolphins t-shirt on, so that was pretty cool. Great stuff, guys. I know these guys personally, and I know that the Combat Dolphins, they work hard, and they can show it, and you can tell by the show today that through this time of lockdown and social distancing and all the other things we're going through, they've been working hard and moving forward, doing all kinds of stuff, making guitars, making music, Bringing it right here live to here and now through the Arts Whistler. Uh, we got one thing left to do, and I think it is uh, spin that wheel to find out what the magical mystery question is. Marcus, Marcus spin a heart. Go for it, Marcus. You're the new guy, Grasshopper. Question mm. number 10. <laughs> do any of your instruments have names? And if so, why? We should go down the line. You want to start, Marcus? Yeah. Like, half of mine have names, but they're usually, like, a practical thing. Like, that one's black, so that's black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of them is, I have a one called the Cadillac. Um, and it's because my buddy crashed his Cadillac a while ago, and I built a guitar, and he gave me the little badge. So that's my Cadillac. And then... Um, Oh, I don't know if I should say the name of one of them. 
<laughs> Probably best not. Yeah, then. maybe I'll maybe I'll leave that one. That one might be remain a mystery unless you see Marcus around yeah, town. You can that ask one's him named, personally. That one has something to do with Ry Cooter, though. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. On to the next one. King Julian. Oh. Well, I'm not playing any of my own gear these <laughs> days. Uh, he doesn't own any of his own instruments. OP, isn't it? Other people's? Yeah, <laughs> I've OP. Um, yeah, I mean, my Fender Jazz is the jazz. Uh, yeah. That's about it. It's nothing creative. I want to name that red thing, but that's Murray's, so. Big red? We won't do it. Yeah. Trav, you red. have a name for your drums? Oh, uh, well, my truck has the same name as my drum kit, which is Rumbles. <laughs> rumbles, yeah. Rumbles, that's yeah. a good name. Yeah. So it's a stage rumbles, and I've got garage rumbles, so yeah. it's a good name. And now we got Murray and his custom yeah. self-made guitar. This What's one's the name? Uh, this one's called Leslie. Um, Leslie. Yeah, it's it's patterned off a uh, like a '50s Les Paul um, special, so Leslie seemed appropriate. That is a beautiful guitar, beautiful Thanks, guitar, bud. and you made that yourself. That is incredible, Murray. Great job. I was just warming up to get. My luthery skills in, in tune for Trav's guitar. If you want to put an order in, it <laughs> takes approximately four and a half years just to get to the finishing status. So, <laughs> <laughs> Great job today, guys. Really had a pleasure being a part of this with you guys. Uh, really loved sitting back and hearing Combat Dolphin's original music. Great job. Uh, I wish you guys all the best coming up. And uh, if you're around town or you get the chance to look at them on any of the social media platforms, Look out for not only uh, Combat Dolphin's original music to come out, but also look forward to some of those live garage live stream shows that we enjoy so much. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Thank Adam. You. Thanks, Thanks, Adam. Adam. Thanks, Appreciate Whistler. that, man. And Arts Whistler, too. That, this is amazing. There's a lot of people behind the scenes here that have done an amazing job. And we want to thank each and every one of you. Appreciate Thanks, guys. It. It's nice, Marcus. There it is. So this song's called uh, Theory of Your Doppelganger and it's about uh it's about the feeling you get Marcus when uh when you're with someone all the time, you live with them, you love them, you see them every day and and you know that person so well but then all of a sudden they start acting strange. So strange in fact that you start to question reality and, and you think maybe it's their evil other, their evil doppelganger. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, it's called Theory of Your Doppelganger. Here we go. Have I shared with you? I have told a few now. Have I shared with you my theory of your doppelganger? Have I shared with you? I have told a few now. Have I shared with you my theory of your doppelganger? Shared with you, I am told of you now. Have I shared with you my theory of the doppelganger? Have I shared with you, I am told of you now. Have I shared with you my theory of the doppelganger? I knew the other night when you slipped in a bed. I got wind of the lights, I just couldn't be right It was weird how a kiss could not Oh, it was weird how a kiss could not Oh, it was weird how a kiss could not It was weird when we kissed good night If I share with you If I share with you my theory of the doppelganger If I share with you I have told of you now If I share with you my theory of the doppelganger
Dolphins out. There you go. The Combat Dolphins. Week one here is a wrap. Here and now, brought to you by the Arts Whistler. We're coming back to you live next week, Thursday night at 7 o'clock. The Little Bigs Band will be performing. Can't wait to see you here. Keep rocking, Whistler. <laughs>